Hi, this is Annie Grace, and welcome to this Naked Mind podcast. Today I'm here with Anique, and Anique has a really special story, and it's very close to me because she reached out to me, what was it, uh, six months ago, seven months ago? And we started yeah, about that. <laughs> started talking and struck up a, a friendship, and it's it's just been really, really awesome. So thank you so much for joining and sharing your story. Well, thank you for having me, and this is so exciting because I guess we're going to talk about the story, but I I really, 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 I'm excited to be there doing this with you today. Oh, it's so awesome. So why don't you just sort of start at the beginning? Like, um, what was your life like when you were drinking? You know, just give us typical day in the life. <laughs> well, I was an entrepreneur, I'm an entrepreneur, but I was in the retail business. So I was running three shops and that was really stressful. So I was, you know, during the day, I was this busy woman trying to get things going and everything was fine. I, I, I had friends telling me, oh my God, you're a businesswoman now and stuff like that. But then I would have days, or should I say evenings or nights when I would go out with friends and I would have a drink or 12 (laughs) and then you know put myself in situations well first in situations that were embarrassing or situations that were even dangerous you know drunk driving or doing stuff that made me feel like not happy to say the least the next morning so I was in that situation of really fighting the the shame around what I was doing and the fact that I was living this double life. And so were you blacking out totally? Did you have stuff you just couldn't remember or was it always just kind of fuzzy? Well, sometimes it depends how much I had. Sometimes it was just a little bit fuzzy or it would usually be fuzzy up to a certain point and then there would generally always be a part of the evening that I would not really remember. Yeah. And um, the my turning point, let's say the moment I got really scared, which is a little bit where I found you, is the day, you know, as I said, there would always be parts of the evening that I would not remember, but they were a minor part of the evening, let's say. And the problem is that one day I just woke up in the morning and I couldn't remember how I had gotten home and when I looked out of the window I saw my car which meant that I had driven home and I think that's when it it struck me and I realized that I was putting myself in a dangerous situation and also you know I was scared because I thought I I really felt my blood freeze at the thought of, oh my God, I don't even remember driving home. What if I hit someone? What if the police is going to come and get me? Or, you know, and it was, I I really hated that feeling. And I realized, you know, I could have killed myself as well, or it was not the life I wanted to live. And I thought it was not coherent uh, as well with what I was doing, because by then I had started my life coaching practice and I thought you know you can't be teaching people how to make the most of their lives when you are drinking your brains up and putting yourself in situations like that so I thought I need to do something I need to start moderating sorry well I was just (laughs) curious so um if we go back to like childhood and high school, like was there influence from your parents or influence in high school or was it just sort of something that very slowly? What is funny is that I never really drank. Uh, I never really drank until I got to the age of, I guess, 25, 20, I don't know, it was, yeah, about 25, 28 actually. It's just that it had never been part of my my lifestyle. And then I moved uh, to Mauritius, which is my home country, but I had always, I had been living abroad. So then I moved there and I started making friends and I was part of the expat community and, you know, we were living at the beach. So 
it everything had alcohol and there wasn't much else to do so it was sundowners with cocktails it was dinners and evenings at the bar it was dinner parties at home with friends with alcohol catamaran trips at the beach with wine at 11 o'clock in the morning <laughs> oh, you know there was a lot of alcohol so and there was also a lot of stress because I was working and I was really working a lot and I guess those two things became a bad combination, like a bad, bad cocktail. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that makes sense. That's so, that's so, I, I mean, I completely relate. It was very similar for me when I was, you know, 26. So I hadn't drink a lot, you know, very much on occasion before that. And then suddenly things change shift. So then what happened? So you had this one night, your blood froze, and, and then what? So I thought, oh, my God, I can't do this. And I was actually on holiday, and I thought, okay, I am not going to put myself at risk because I don't want anything bad happening to me. So I I want to moderate, but I don't want to punish myself. I don't want – I felt like moderating – would treat myself like, oh my God, you don't know how to drink. And it, it was a double shame. It was a shame for everything that had happened before that led me to that situation. And then putting even more shame on myself saying, no, now you're not going to drink because you can't drink. And I, 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 I felt conflicted with that situation. And so I went in a Facebook group my coaching group and I put out I wrote a post it's it's funny when I read that now I wrote the post and I said here's the situation and I don't know what to do I feel like not drinking is de depriving myself but I I don't want to feel like I'm punishing myself but I I know that drinking is dangerous because I can't just have one drink and stop and you know, there were a lot of people telling me, oh, my God, you know, you have to speak to someone. You have to go to the nearest AA association meeting. And I, I felt like, no, I'm not, I'm not going to go to AA. I'm not an alcoholic. <laughs> you know? And I remember someone said to me, um, go look in the resources of our coaching course. It was the Spirit Junkie Masterclass. So. Gabrielle Bernstein has a history of recovery of addiction and she speaks about recovery as well. So I went in the resources and there was a list of books that that were there. And I thought, OK, I'm going to go and check those books out. And I went on Amazon and the book I typed in for some reason didn't come up. And the book that came up was This Naked Mind. Oh, sweet. Well, that's like this. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's really cool. <laughs> and I thought, oh, okay. I read the description of the book and I was like, oh my God, this is me. I need to read this book. And I bought the book. I started reading it and it was the 26th or the 27th of December. And I read the book and I read it in three days. And by the time I finished the book, which was a day before New Year's Eve, I was like, oh, my God, I'm not going to drink again. And I, I remember I took pictures. I brewed my – I was going to party with my friends for New Year's Eve. And I remember I brewed my own ginger ale or something like that, my own drink. I prepared my, my own drink so that I would have something non-alcoholic to drink at the party. And – I haven't drank since. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. So how long ago was that? That was two years ago, two years and a few weeks, a couple of weeks. Oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. Um, and so, you know, what what was it like then? What did your friends say? How was that first party? Well, uh, I in the meantime, you know, while I was reading your book, I had already made the decision not to drink for my holiday. So it was a couple of weeks and I wasn't drinking. And I remember we had this 
this expression R and R because my friends were expats and they went to work on missions. So after a mission, they would have this period called R and R, rest and recuperate. And when we when we would have big parties and we would be on water or non-alcoholic drinks for a while, we would say, "No, I'm on R and R." And I remember since the last time I had drinks was with my friends. Um, the next time, the following times we went out and I was having water or something non-alcoholic, they said, oh, what's wrong with you? What's the matter? And I said, oh, you know, I'm on R&R. &R. And after a few days, it's, it started, you know, they were looking at me and they said, oh, well, that's a long R&R. &R. And I said, yeah. And then by the time I finished your book, I realized I didn't that I didn't want it to be just an R and R period that was temporary. I wanted it to be something, you know, that would last at least for a long time. And I know I had friends. I had been for dinner with friends with my friends, and I remember a couple of times they said things like, "Oh, come on, just have a glass. Oh, you're boring," but. You know, I, I, for me, that was it. I had reached that point where I didn't want to get into that cycle again. And I remember before New Year's Eve, I sent a message to my friend and I said to her, you know what, um, I know you, you just want me to have fun, but I think the best thing for me now is not to drink. So I would really appreciate it if you could support me. And I remember she said, okay, but don't be so harsh on yourself. And, you know, I guess it was her way to tell me, it's okay, I love you anyway. You don't have to be harsh to beat yourself up. But for me, it was like, I'm not being harsh on myself. I am making the right decision and choosing what's best for me. And I'm, I'm really, really, really glad and grateful that I stuck with my decision because everything that happened from that moment on led me to a life, and I keep saying this, but it really led me to a life that is be, beyond my wildest dreams. And even to imagine, you know, that I would, re I would write a book and I would be here talking with you and, you know, becoming friends with you. I'm like, oh my God. Because I remember that morning I was hungover, feeling like crap in my room and not knowing what to do and reading your book and thinking, oh, my God, this woman, she's figured it out. And <laughs> <laughs> Embarrassingly. <laughs> <laughs> and then I made it too. So I'm really a huge fan, as you can see. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Um, so that, yeah, that comment from your friend... It is interesting because I think that's very typical. Like a lot of people, um, especially, you know, it, it, they don't intend it to be negative, right? They don't intend, they're, they're sort of saying like, okay, I know you, I, you know, we're the same, like we do all the same things together. Like, I know that you're not really, an like you don't have a problem. And so just, yeah. you know, relax with yourself, like just but you've already made this decision. You've said, okay, yeah, I know me too. Like, I know I'm not here, but I know I want to be here. You know, I want, I want to elevate kind of my life. I want to elevate what I'm putting in my body. I want to be more mindful of this. And, and frankly, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, I know when people, I had a lot of, of coworkers and employees who that was the majority of my drinking was at work. And when I stopped drinking, they're like, but I never even saw you drunk. Like you're the last person I would have thought would stop. And it didn't matter that nobody had, you know, it was their way of saying, well, don't be harsh on yourself. You know, you, you obviously are fine. And I'm like, I don't care what metric or ruler you're using. For me, this is better. You know, and I think that's really, that's really cool. And, and it shows a very big strength of character to make that decision. So how has your social life kind of changed or evolved um, since? Well, uh, I have had the opportunity of exploring different circles. So when I had first quit, I moved country as well. So I met new friends and those new friends met me as a non-drinking person, most of them. 
And what's funny is that at the beginning, I, I, I went out and most of them were my boyfriend's friends. And at the beginning, I would, you know, order a non-alcoholic beer and they would have their normal beers. And at some point, I was still smoking at the time. And at some point, you know, I would go out for a cigarette and then people would look at me and would be like, oh, but, and then some one day someone said to me, but I thought you were pregnant. <laughs> because I wasn't drinking. They, they they assumed the reason why I wasn't drinking was because I was pregnant. But, you know, once I said, no, I'm not drinking because I'm just not drinking, then after that, that was okay. And then I, I, I met, I moved again, and it was the same. You know, people got to know me as someone who didn't drink already. So, it was okay. Some people were curious and they would ask questions. Some people would would ask funny questions like, oh, but how much did you drink then if you had to quit? Was it that bad? And stuff like that. But um, I have to say, it's been really interesting because now I am back where I was when I was drinking. So I'm visiting and I'm in Mauritius again. And I was... I was a bit curious about that trip because, you know, I've been navigating my uh, alcohol-free life in circles that hadn't known me as the drinking me. And I thought, how is it going to be? And actually, it's just the same. I still hang out with the same friends. I still go out. We still have fun until very late. They drink. I don't drink. What's handy is that now I'm the one drink I'm the one driving because I'm not drinking. So I I find it cool because there is no um divide or no gap. My friends drink and they still, you know, drink as much as they want to drink. And they don't feel like I'm judging them and I don't feel like they're embarrassed because it has happened in the past where I would tell a friend, okay, you know, I've stopped drinking and we would go out for a drink and I would have an, a non-alcoholic cocktail and she would have a beer and she would be like, is it okay if I have a beer? Are you okay with me drinking? And I was like, yeah, I'm not drinking. You can drink. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes people get a bit weirded out by the fact that you're not drinking and they feel uncomfortable, but I'm really glad that actually that's not the case. And I think we spoke about that the other day. It's all about how you present it to other people. It's all about the vibe. So if you're cool about not drinking, I think people don't even, and I think people don't even notice that I'm not drinking. So that's, I find that really cool. At the end of the day, nothing has changed per se except that I'm not drinking, but all the rest is still there. All the good times and all the fun is still there. Just the hangovers and the shame aren't there anymore. Oh, that's so cool. That's awesome. That's so cool. I love that. I love your story because I know that, you know, when you say very late, you're talking like <laughs> three in the morning, watching the sunrise and stuff and things that people think, oh, well, I won't even want to do that after I quit drinking or that won't even be fun but you know if it was fun to watch the sunrise because you've been out laughing with your friends all night like it wasn't necessarily the alcohol that made that fun in fact the alcohol made you not remember it but you know it's it's fun anyway I mean it's even more fun and I have to say everything is so much fun now because I get to first when I go out I'm not scared of embarrassing myself at some point so my guards are down and secondly, I get to remember everything and to be fully present and be witty and fun and, you know, 100% there and ha connect with people in a really, uh, uh, unless they, they are drinking and then at some point they will somehow drift in the in their <laughs> not so present world. But, you know, when I connect with people, who aren't drunk, let's say, it is 
much more precious. It, it is much more valuable because we are both there and the interactions are much more uh, pregnant with sense and meaning yeah. and connection. Oh, that's so cool. And what about dating? Have you had dating experiences? Oh. Much? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, that was a really funny, funny part of the story because I, I started before... So I broke up with my former boyfriend, and so I was single and alcohol-free. And when I started dating again, when I started thinking about dating, I, I, I got really scared and nervous because, you know, I had always had alcohol as my crutch, as my wingman, as my helper before in former relationships. Everything started with alcohol. You know, you meet someone and you get that courage to talk to them or you meet someone and then you go on a first date or whatever date and then, you know, you get tipsy and so things get, you know, you know. So uh, the idea of dating again, but without alcohol to help me made me really, really nervous. And as much as I would be confident in all the other areas of my life, the idea of going on a first date with someone was really scary and when it did happen that was really interesting because uh I met someone and um we actually met a few times before we started going on our first date and when we did go on our first date we went to I mean we had three or four dates and we we were just going out and talking and holding hands. And, you know, I felt like a 15 year old teenager. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny, but it, I was, I was really nervous. I was really nervous and, you know, even getting intimate without alcohol, I had never done that. So it took time for me to get used to, you know, to get comfortable with that person. But, Everything was there and was there, I don't know if I can say for a reason, but everything that I said, I meant, and everything that he said, he meant as well. But it was so much different from, you know, going out with someone, getting tipsy, doing things or saying things that were pushed by alcohol and then waking up the next day and thinking, oh my God, why did I do that? Or why did I say that? So I've realized that the quality of my relationship without alcohol is like 10 times or 100 times better than what it was before because the evolution of that relationship was organic and not fueled by something artificial which was alcohol oh that's so cool and so it's like just deeper and more meaningful just like your interactions with friends you know it's sort of the same idea and so it takes a little courage to try something new but the rewards are um obviously absolutely it's so worth it that's so awesome and so you said earlier that you know since you stopped drinking like your life has just exploded and I always like to say because it's just so many especially entrepreneurs and I think entrepreneurs are really unique in this in that the things that Uh, you know, the idea of addictive personality is such a funny idea because it's a group of personality traits that can be good or bad, but they just lump together and say, that's an addictive personality. Well, guess what? Like if you overlay the addictive personality on the entrepreneurial personality, it's like a hundred percent (laughs) match. So it's the same things that make people, you know, get too far into some sort of addiction that make people, you know, start their own businesses, which ultimately, you know, change the world. And, um, And so I I just find that really interesting. And so there's this massive relationship between um, entrepreneurial success on the other side of drinking just becoming explosive. And uh, so you, I'd love you to talk just a little bit about, you said that you're living this life you couldn't have even sort of imagined. And yeah, what is that? Give us some details. (laughs) So uh, basically I realized so the day I realized I was drinking, I realized that I was drinking for a reason. You know, I was drinking because I didn't want to face things. I didn't want to face my demons. And what happened was that when I would drink, 
I, it was as if then I would get um, out of control and then they would come out and they would run the show and then that's when stuff would happen. So I decided I would face those demons. You know, I would really have a look at the things that I hadn't wanted to look at. And I started, so when I stopped drinking, I started doing a lot of inner work, of self-work. And I don't know if it's quitting alcohol that did that or if it was just the fact that because I wasn't drinking and I wasn't numbing anymore, I had those feelings there. So it was either I worked my way through them or I would just, you know, sit with them and that was not comfortable. So I I had this period where I did a lot of self-work and I worked through all these issues and I was building my business as well. And uh, about a year in, I I just felt that urge to, it felt like I was ready and I realized that, okay, all those stories, all those past events that I have been um, trying to avoid or that I have, I think have defined me or, or such, I don't want these things to define me anymore. I think they're old stuff, but they are still part of who I am. So I thought I would just move them to a new container, you know, just like when you do, you move stuff from your hard drive to, from your hard disk to an external hard drive. I thought I would take those stories and just move them and give them another container, which was my book. And I decided to write my book, not only as a way to give a new home to those stories, but as a way to process them, you know, go through them, process them, and then say, here, there you go, fresh space, fresh slate to become someone new. And it's exactly what happened. The fact that I did this was exceptionally healing for me. It was transformational and it's like a new person was birthed. And from that success from the book as well, um, I, I started doing well in business, but well in life as well. Because when you write a book and when you deal with your stuff, you become a new person and you rise above everything that had been holding you back. And I, and that's why, you know, I, I have been living the dream, honestly, since my book came out, it was uh, on my birthday last year, six months ago, seven months ago, I have been living the dream. And I was an entrepreneur trying to be, to live, you know, the online entrepreneur life, nomad and stuff, but it hadn't happened until my book was out and everything, it was like a veil was lifted and it was like, ta-da, here's your new life. Oh, that's so cool. And I realized that it was a series of steps, but the first step of that journey was quitting alcohol. That's so cool. And so what, um, What I know this, but tell the audience, what, what's the name of your book <laughs> and where can people find it? So my book is called Soul Superstar Stories from My Sober Heart. And the story is basically me exploring all the events that have shaped who I am, including that part of me that wanted to drink and wanted to numb. And it's called Soul Superstar as well, because there is this being, let's say, my soul superstar, who has been there and who believes that, or who took me through all these experiences that were negative from a superficial point of view but that actually made me who I am so that I would get to that point where I would just heal my past and then shed that old me and rise so that's my story and that's the book and it is available on Amazon oh that's so cool and I'm yeah. the I'm writing the foreword for it which Annick has asked me to Anik has asked me to do which I'm really excited about <laughs> Um, yes, and this is this is really like coming full circle for me. You know, I was reading your book and I felt, oh my God, then my life changed and then I wrote my book and then you wrote the forward. You are writing the forward to my book. It's like 
full circle and ta-da, this is what happened. <laughs> That's so cool. That's so cool. Um, I love your story and I love your just being positive, vibrant. I think your soul superstar has like integrated and now she is one and you're just very, very vibrant. It's just awesome to see. Uh, Thank you. I have a final question that I ask everybody. <clears throat> so, you know, the person who was ice in her veins and afraid and felt like she was deprived when she would stop drinking. Um, what would you go back in time and tell her about what life is like now to give her courage and hope? Well, I would tell her, I know it sucks right now. I know it's hard, but this is just a little bridge that you have to cross. And I know it might feel like boot camp bridge, but if you keep going and if you keep sticking to your decision of not drinking, what is on the other side of that boot camp bridge is a whole new world of, you know, flowers and sparkles and things that are really, that will really make it worth it. Oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. Awesome. Well, did you have anything else? Um, <clears throat> any final thoughts or tips for people or anything else you wanted to say? Um, yes, I want to say, you know, I, I, I said that a few times, um, on my blog, it's like, it can be scary and it can be hard when you first quit because stuff comes up and a lot of people are tempted to go back to alcohol because they say, oh, this is not working. I feel terrible. And I have all those thoughts and all those negative thoughts. And what I want to say is it's normal. And I don't know who said that, but you know, the only way forward is through, the only way out is through. And if you keep going and if you keep doing the work, there will be difficult days, there will be challenging days, but there will also be good days. And at some point, the amount of bad days will decrease and the amount of good days will increase, you know, and at some point, there will be more good days than bad days, like super good days. So keep going. That's so awesome. That's so great. And then if people want to read more of your blog, where could they find it? Well, on my website, which is anikina.com, A-N-I-C-K-I-N-A, I-N-A.com. Awesome. Thank you so much, Anik, for coming on and sharing your story. It's wonderful to see you. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm, again, I'm really excited to be doing this with you. <laughs> This has been Annie Grace with This Naked Mind Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. You can learn more at thisnakedmind.com. And please remember to rate, review, and subscribe as it really helps us spread the word.